you're, you're in camera. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. Thank you for coming. You know what this election is about? It's about picking a party that is in it for everyday people. Knocking on doors here in Vancouver Centre, I've been hearing from folks that they've had enough of liberal and conservative governments that keep making life easier and easier for the very wealthy, for the well-connected, for the massive corporations. Meanwhile, everyday folks are feeling squeezed. They're feeling taken for granted. But here in Vancouver Centre, folks are also telling me that they feel inspired. They're feeling hopeful because they've seen our leader They've seen him taking on the rich and powerful. They've heard him talking about things that matter to families. Friends, I'm feeling inspired too. And I know you are. So please help me to welcome the leader of the New Democratic Party of Canada, Jagmeet Singh. Thank you much, very much for joining us. Thank you to our incredible team of candidates for being here. It's been an incredible journey. And uh, before I go any further, I just want to acknowledge that while we acknowledge the territories for New Democrats, it's not enough to just acknowledge the land that we're gathered upon, but also to acknowledge the injustice that Indigenous communities have faced historically, continue to face ongoing, and that we commit collectively to remedying those injustices. And that means uh, a number of things, but one of those concrete steps we can take is implementing the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So friends, we're a day away from the election, and I want to send a message to Canadians before they go to vote. In this election, you do have a choice. We know that Canadians cannot wait four more years for real action on all the things that they need whether it's families that are waiting for help when it comes to health care, families that can't afford the medication they need, families that can't get the dental services that they need. I, I want to let Canadians know they, they shouldn't have to wait, and I know that they can't wait. These are urgent concerns. When it comes to housing, families that cannot find a place to live, they cannot wait four years for help. For young people and for people that are worried about the future of our planet, they cannot wait four years to see real action on climate justice. And that's exactly what Mr. Trudeau is going to ask you to do. He's going to ask you to wait. He has let you down. He does not deserve your vote. Mr. Trudeau has chosen very clearly to help out those at the very top, the rich and powerful corporations, over your families. And in doing so, he has hurt families across Canada. By choosing to protect the pharmaceutical industry over families that can't afford medication, he has hurt families who are struggling with that cost. By choosing to not do anything to really remedy the crisis in housing. He has hurt families. He has chosen to give $14 billion to the richest corporations in the last fall economic statement, but he has chosen to invest 19% less per GDP than the Conservative Party when it comes to housing. 
He has made it clear again and again that he would rather help the biggest polluters, allow them to continue to enjoy subsidies and exemptions, rather than make sure young people know that we are doing everything we can to fight the climate crisis. Mr. Trudeau does not deserve your vote. He has let you down and he has hurt families. Mr. Scheer is not the solution. Mr. Scheer is going to cut services. He makes it very clear. He's going to cut taxes for the wealthiest and services for everyone else. And that's going to cost families much more in the long run. That is not the solution. And I wanted to put, I want to put this to you. You do not have to choose between bad and worse. While Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Scheer are arguing about who's worse for Canada, we have been talking about who is best for Canada and what is best for Canada. And that is investing in people, not the powerful corporations. And that's what you get with New Democrats. We will deliver real action on all the things that Canadians need. We will fight hard to make sure the healthcare system is there for you when you need it. We're going to fight hard to make sure you can find a home to call your own. We're going to make sure we deliver honest action on reconciliation that works towards remedying the injustices. We are going to fight hard to bring real action on the climate justice front because we know families deserve that. We are in it for you. We fight for you. The difference between us and the Liberals and the Conservatives is while they want to fight about who's worse for Canada and why they continue to work for the very wealthiest and those at the very top, we are in it for you. We are fighting for you. And we are making sure that we do everything we can to put people at the heart of everything that we put forward in terms of solutions. So, so I ask you in this election, my friends, uh, vote for hope. Vote for something. Don't vote out of fear and definitely don't settle for less. You deserve more and New Democrats are going to deliver that. Dans cette élection, vous avez un choix. C'est clair que les libéraux ont laissé tomber les familles. Ils ont laissé tomber les travailleurs et travailleuses. Ils ont choisi de favoriser les plus riches et ça a fait mal aux familles. Ils ont encore choisi de donner des exemptions pour les grands pollueurs. Ils ont choisi d'aider, de, de protéger les profits pour les grandes entreprises pharmaceutiques au lieu de mettre en œuvre un programme universel et public pour la science médicament. Donc c'est clair que les libéraux ne méritent plus votre vote. C'est aussi clair que les conservateurs vont couper les services dont vous avez besoin et n'ont pas la solution pour régler les problèmes dans la vie des gens. C'est nous, les néo-démocrates, le choix progressiste. Si vous voulez quelqu'un qui va se battre pour vous, pour lutter contre la crise climatique, pour rendre la vie plus abordable et pour s'assurer que le plus riche paye le juste part, c'est nous, les néo-démocrates. Et en fait, on peut, c'est nous qui peut travailler ensemble avec le reste du Canada, qui peut unir les progressistes au Québec avec les progressistes au reste du Canada pour travailler ensemble, pour mettre en œuvre les programmes et les services et les politiques pour aider la vie, augmenter la vie des gens. C'est nous, les démocrates, qui se battent pour vous. Then again, once again, friends, uh, I want you to know that in this election, you can vote for hope, you can vote for something, New Democrats will fight for you. At the end of the day, I want this to also be clear. Uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping to become your Prime Minister. I want to fight hard for you. I want to develop uh, a future that's bright for Canadians. But either way, whatever Canadians choose, I want Canadians to win. And I put it to you this way. If you elect enough New Democrats, we will form government and put in place all of our commitments. But if you elect new, enough New Democrats, we will fight hard to make sure that these priorities are realized. Vote New Democrat. We beat Conservatives. New Democrats beat Conservative governments. New Democrats fight for you. Thank you so much, and I'm ready to take your questions. Star. Um, throughout the campaign, you, you've, as you just did, uh, again, uh, accused the Liberals <coughs> and Conservatives of been, being like beholden to the interests of the rich. You've said the system, we have a rigged system against uh, most people. Um, and there's sort of the consensus that this has been a very divisive campaign. I wonder if you think that your language throughout the campaign has contributed to this divisiveness. Uh, I think it's important for Canadians to have a contrast and to know that there's choices in this election. And it's just the fact that Mr. Trudeau has chosen again and again to help out those at the very top, the powerful corporations over families. He's chosen to do that and he's let families down. The Conservatives aren't going to make things any better. 
uh, they have made it clear that they're going to cut services that family depend on. I made it clear that those choices are bad choices, and I've made it clear what their priorities are, and that our choices are different. New Democrats are in it for people. We're going to fight for people. We're not going to work for the richest corporations. We're going to work for you. And I think that's important for Canadians to know, to be able to make a choice tomorrow. The New Democrats are in it for you, and we're fighting for you. Um, and just uh, on um, decriminalizing drugs, can you be more specific? I've never heard you be specific about which drugs would be decriminalized and how that would work. Is it about safe supply? Just how, what is your vision about decriminalizing drugs and which drugs are you talking about? Sure, our vision is this. When it comes to people that are dealing with addictions, that are dealing with mental health, they're dealing with poverty, that are in a current system criminalized uh, because of their, their struggles. When they're using personal use um, of illicit substances, they're using that because of various reasons. But those people that are users are not benefited from the criminal justice response. They need compassion. If we want to save lives, it's very clear the current approach has not worked. And while Liberals have given up on families, have not declared a, uh, a national public health emergency, Conservatives don't think it's their job to, we believe in taking care of people. We want to save lives. And to save lives, we know we've got to take a different approach. And that's a compassionate approach. That's a healthcare response to people that are dealing with mental health, addiction, or poverty. That's what we want to do. Hi, Mr. Singh. Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News. Hi. I'd like to ask you about how you feel emotionally today. Not about policy, just emotionally on this final day. Um, I feel really overwhelmed and honoured by all the incredible outpouring of support. I feel honoured that we've been able to run a campaign that has put people at the heart of it. And people have asked me lots of questions about this campaign. I think this campaign has really been about people. And it's been about... Uh, their voices being heard. I've, I've heard from people who tell me their stories about not being able to find housing, their stories about not having health care when they need it, young people that are worried about the environment. And this campaign has really been about letting their voices be heard, letting their struggles, their worries, their fears be heard, but also to give them hope that we can choose a brighter way forward. And that's why I'm, I'm overwhelmed with all the love that we've been receiving, because we've been, we've been really making this about people, and people are feeling it. And that, to me, is the, the greatest success. Euh, dans cette campagne, euh, je suis vraiment honoré parce que ce qu'on a voulu faire pendant toute la campagne, c'était d'utiliser la campagne pour donner une voix aux gens qui se sentent comme laisse tomber, les gens qui se sentent qu'ils n'ont pas une voix. Et pour moi, ça c'est pourquoi je suis tellement honoré parce que je pense qu'on a réussi à donner une voix, à donner une plateforme aux gens. Et ça, c'est pourquoi aussi on a reçu, on a reçu beaucoup d'amour des Canadiens et Canadiennes parce qu'ils ils se, ils se retrouvent dans notre campagne. Et pour moi, c'est une grande fierté qu'on a, on a, euh, a atteint ce résultat. I want to ask you about uh, British Columbia in particular. There are very tight races here. The Liberals and Conservatives and Elizabeth May are all campaigning in British Columbia on the final day, something I, I really haven't seen before, all leaders here. Um, they're going to be doing, though, the Liberals and Conservatives, about three times more events. Do you feel like you're being outpaced here in this very tight race on the final day? No, not at all. We, we've made a, a really clear message to Canadians that they can choose to vote for hope, that they don't have to fall into the discussion or argument about who's worse for Canada, and we are giving Canadians a real option here. We, we have a campaign that has been driven by people and has shown folks the real alternative, investments in health care, fighting the climate crisis like we want to win it, making sure we make the richest Canadians and corporations, those at the very, very, very top, pay their fair share. People know what they get with New, get new Democrats, and, I, and I'm proud of the campaign that we've run. Bonjour, M. Singh, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Pour faire un suivi à la question d'Anna, euh, vous avez beaucoup moins d'événements en Colombie-Britannique aujourd'hui que les autres. Est-ce que c'est parce que vous n'avez pas assez d'argent ou est-ce qu'au contraire, vous avez abandonné? <rire> non, non, pas du tout. Euh, ce qu'on a vu avec euh, le momentum qui a... Qui a on, on a bâti avec le momentum qu'on a bâti, c'est euh, complètement l'autre euh, cas. On, on a beaucoup d'énergie mais on a fait notre argument. C'est clair pour les Canadiens et Canadiennes que le choix progressif, c'est nous. On peut travailler ensemble avec les autres. On peut travailler ensemble avec les progressistes au Canada et unir les progressistes du Québec 
pour bâtir une meilleure société. C'est exactement ce qu'on peut faire et on a montré ça pendant ce campagne et aujourd'hui aussi. aussi. C'est votre dernière journée. Vous arrêtez de faire campagne à 3 heures, heure du Pacifique. Vous prenez une pause. Pourquoi pas continuer le plus tard possible? Pourquoi arrêter à 3 heures? Euh, on a fait notre travail de montrer que les libéraux, ils, euh, ils ne méritent plus votre vote. Ils ont laissé tomber les gens et les gens sont déçus. Et on sait que les conservateurs vont couper les services. Donc, euh, c'est clair, le choix progressiste, c'est nous, les néo-démocrates. On va bâtir une société plus juste et, et on est fiers de notre travail. Uh, we, we've done a, a really, you know, we've worked really hard to show Canadians that you have a choice in this election, that while Liberals have let you down and haven't delivered on the things that you need, haven't delivered on pharmacare or healthcare investments, and Conservatives are going to cut the services you need, you do not have to choose between those two. New Democrats are here for you, we're going to fight for you, and we've uh, ran a campaign based on the stories of people and their struggles and the hope for a brighter future. Hi, Mr. Singh, Janice Dixon, Globe and Mail. Um, What's your message to sort of the naysayers out there who wrote off your campaign before it even began? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's, that's something that I've, I've dealt with my whole life, so I was not worried about that. <laughs> um, I also know that a lot of Canadians uh, go through that, right? They, they face barriers or they face naysayers based on who they are, based on their sexuality, their gender, the color of their skin, the way they look, and they're told that they can't achieve things. And I hope Canadians can see in me a little bit of themselves and a little bit of the struggles that they faced and that uh, that's what you do when you're up against uh, a lot of negativity you keep on pushing forward my mom always gave me a saying chardikala rising spirits and i always channel that in all i do and i do that because canadians need us and depend on us and and looking back at the campaign what's what's something that you think your campaign or you could have done differently what's a regret you might have I don't, know, I don't really have any regrets. We, we ran a campaign that, that was true to, to who I am, and that always feels good. It was based on people, which is the only reason why, why we're in this, why we're in this. And it has been about really giving people hope. And, and folks have felt that. A lot of people come up to me and tell me, you know what, I, I feel hope again. I feel like there's someone out there that's fighting for me. And that to me has been uh, one of my greatest honors. I'm interesting. Kevin Gallagher is CTV News. Um, going into this election, climate change in many polls was the most important issue for voters. But Canadians now having listened to not just you, but all of the leaders debate these issues and really along partisan lines trying to score political points, how do you think Canadians should feel about any future that Canada has to fight climate change? Well, if you vote New Democrats, you should feel very proud of that future and very hopeful for that future because we're going to fight for you. And we're going to fight for you not just on making sure we give a, a bright future for young people and, and make sure that we fight with everything we have to protect our air and our land and our water, but also know that New Democrats are going to make sure that people have housing and health care and justice in their lives. And I think that there's a lot to be hopeful for particularly if you've got new Democrats fighting for you. Um, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yesterday, you responded to a protester on the liquid natural gas pipeline in BC, and your response right away was, you know, you want a future where there are no fossil fuels. Um, we've asked you for specifics on many issues, and today, again, I will ask you, mm -hmm. what is a specific plan? Do you have timelines that you envision? for reducing fossil fuels? Do you have a strategy uh, where for oil and gas workers, but also uh, it's a huge sector of Canada's economy and mm -hmm. to eliminate it would be devastating. And there are all, lots of other products that oil provide, plastics, you know, all that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. what are some specific measures that you would envision uh, and the next government of Canada would have to do sure. to, to reach that goal of not relying on fossil fuels? Sure. So, so to be clear, I believe that the future, not just for Canada, but for the world, is a future where we're not burning carbon for energy, where we're not using fossil fuel for energy. And, and that's a future I want to achieve. While Mr. Trudeau promised to do certain things, he let Canadians down. He promised to end fossil fuel subsidies. I think that's one of the first starting points, a concrete starting point, that none of our public dollars 
should be going towards the fossil fuel sector. We should not be subsidizing that sector. What we should be doing is investing in clean and renewable energy. So that's one concrete step. While Mr. Scheer doesn't understand the gravity of the problem, and Mr. Trudeau likes to give pretty words, New Democrats, <clears throat> when we have our voices, <clears throat> are, are committed to, to a real concrete step forward, which is to end fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, there's a host of other measures, but that's one concrete thing we can do to start us down the path to a future where we are using renewable and clean energy. Bonjour, Monsieur Singh, François Cormier, TVA. Um, vous parlez d'un momentum à travers le pays. Est-ce que vous pensez que vous avez le même momentum au Québec ou avez-vous échappé la balle au Québec? Euh, au Québec, on a vu aussi un euh, momentum, un grand momentum. On a eu un rassemblement à Montréal avec euh, beaucoup de monde. C'était euh, tellement énergétique et on a été fiers de, de la réponse. Et on a montré aussi au Québec, avec notre équipe au Québec, que si vous voulez un choix progressiste, c'est clair, les progressistes, c'est nous. Parce que c'est nous qui avons un plan pour faire face à la crise climatique, pour rendre la vie plus abordable, pour faire payer les, les plus riches, mais aussi euh, on peut travailler avec les autres à travers le Canada. Donc, pour faire face à la crise climatique, il faut travailler ensemble avec le reste du Canada. C'est nous, les néo-démocrates, qui peut le faire. Sure. Um, we, we've seen great momentum in, in Quebec with our recent rally. We had a, a massive turnout. And we saw a lot of energy, a lot of excitement in Quebec and, and in Montreal, across Quebec. And we, we also made it really clear for progressive voters in Quebec, if you want someone who's going to make life more affordable, who's going to make sure we tackle the climate crisis like we want to win it, who's going to make the richest Canadians pay their fair share, and who's able to work with the rest of Canada to realize these things, it's us, the New Democrats, that can do it. Monsieur Horgan, il y a deux jours, euh, vous disait d'embrasser, disait à vos militants, d'embrasser l'idée d'un gouvernement minoritaire, que c'était une bonne chose, que ça faisait du bien. Est-ce que vous partagez cette idée? Est-ce qu'un gouvernement minoritaire est une bonne chose ou il faut un gouvernement plus stable et majoritaire? Oui, c'est une bonne chose. <rire> Mais en fait, c'est bon, c'est bon parce que les libéraux, ont, ont, ils ont laissé tomber les gens. Uh, ils ne méritent plus le vote des gens. Et ce qu'on a vu, si on donne une majorité aux libéraux, ils brisent les promesses, ils favorisent les plus riches. Et nous, les néo-démocrates, si vous avez plus de néo-démocrates, on va se battre pour vous. On va travailler pour vous. Uh, on favorise les gens, pas, pas les plus riches. On, on, pas, on ne donne pas des exemptions aux grands parloirs. On s'assure qu'ils payent leur juste part. Donc, c'est les néo-démocrates qui forcent des gouvernements d'être plus progressiste, donc oui, bien sûr, je veux être le premier ministre du Canada pour, euh, pour rendre la vie plus abordable, pour faire face à la crise climatique, mais en fait, n'importe quelle, peu importe la décision des Canadiens et Canadiennes, peu importe les décisions des Québécois et Québécoises, avec plus de néo-démocrates, vous avez un allié, vous avez quelqu'un qui va se battre pour vous. Sure. Um, uh, back. Back. Yes. <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. I was like, I was saying lots of stuff that, yes, uh, I absolutely think that, so roll back a bit. Uh, I want to be, I want to be the prime minister of Canada because I believe new Democrats are going to make life better for Canadians and we're going to fight the climate crisis like we want to win it. But Mr. Premier Horgan pointed out that minorities are a good thing. Yes, they are. Uh, we know that liberals do not deserve a majority. They do not deserve your vote because they've let you down. And if, if liberals have a majority again, they're not going to deliver on the things that you need. They've broken their promises. They've shown that they'll talk a good game during the election, but when they get into government, they don't deliver. And they're going to continue to exempt the biggest polluters. They're going to continue to subsidize the biggest the, the oil and gas sector. So yes, the more new Democrats you elect in this election, you're going to have someone on your side that's going to actually deliver the change that you need. And that's why the Conservatives are not the option. They're going to cut your services. The Liberals have let you down. Vote enough New Democrats and we'll form government, but vote enough of us either way and we're going to make sure that your life is better. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Teresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Hi. Um, I would like to ask you about, uh, you know, the fact that you've been appealing to uh, youth voters, young people. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just explain what your strategy is there and also uh, how important uh, the youth vote is to your electoral success? Uh, everyone's important, right? And we need to make sure that everyone feels engaged in politics, everyone feels engaged in decision-making. 
And young people have often been ignored and have often been kind of pushed to the side. And one of the things that I realized throughout our campaign and throughout my, my life is that you've got to speak to people where they are. And wherever they are, if you can speak to them and find them and you have a message that can actually make their life better, then, then use that platform. And so for me, it's been an important thing because young people have so much passion and energy and they can do so much if they're activated and engaged. And for me, it's been really important to make sure young people are engaged, that they do feel like they matter. And speaking to people where they are is a way of saying, hey, I respect you, I value you, and I want your input and I want you to be involved. And that's been really important for us. Uh, I also would, you touched on this in your opening remarks in terms of uh, divisions that have, uh, you know, sort of been, come to play in, in this election campaign. And not just uh, in terms of, the, you know, political parties, uh, you know, in their political messaging, but also issues uh, relating to the different regions of the country and perhaps um, how the, the, the political leaders have been appealing to those regions uh, and perhaps at the expense of national unity. I would like to know after this election, if you become prime minister, what, or even if not, what would you do, what specific thing would you do to try to, to address that and to try to, to unite the country? I think it's a very, very important question and I wanna take some time just to reflect on that. I think when it comes down to divisions, I think divisions are inflamed when people are insecure or afraid. And economic insecurity breeds divisions. So when people are, are stable in their lives, have a good job that pays for all their necessities, where they can live a good life and take care of their kids and their families, they can afford their bills, there's good health care for them, people are more secure and will not be divided. And so the division we're seeing, I believe, is a result of economic insecurity. The fact that more than half of Canadians report that they are in a really tough way, that they're just on the edge of not being able to pay their bills, and that they're worried about the future. And all these worries and fears create divisions or worries and fears allow others to come in and to divide us based on things that are not the reason for the problems. Where can the service will come in and blame new Canadians or blame refugees. It's not the fault of a young refugee woman or a man working breaking his back, working overtime, that people cannot find housing. It's because conservative and liberal governments have chosen for the past three decades not to spend any federal money in building affordable housing. We are here today because liberal and conservative governments have, have favored the wealthy and powerful over families, given them massive exemptions and tax loopholes and offshore tax havens. It's because of those decisions that we're here. And I believe we can build a unified country if people see justice in their lives, if they see affordability in their lives, if they see childcare and healthcare system and housing that is affordable, that is there for them, we can build a better country. Ashley, uh, Ashley Burr, City News. Um, if it came down to it though, would you prop up a minority government? Uh, I've said I'm open to working with anyone, except for the Conservatives. And uh, I don't wanna you know, predict what's gonna happen, but I can tell Canadians this. If you elect enough new Democrats, we're gonna fight for you. Whatever the form Canadians give us, whatever the platform they give us, we are gonna fight for you on our priorities, on the priorities of Canadians, and we are open to any formulation, whatever Canadians choose. You can count on us to be there for you. Thank you so much, everybody. Merci beaucoup. Oh, did you want one? We got the, merci. <laughs> Sorry, James. Um, Monsieur Blanchet, hier, avait un grand rassemblement. Il a parlé de souveraineté, souveraineté, souveraineté dont on n'a pas vraiment entendu parler durant la campagne. Un, euh, quel genre d'effet ça risque d'avoir au Québec? Et deux, seriez-vous prêt à travailler dans un gouvernement minoritaire qui inclut un bloc souverainiste? Donc, euh, pour moi, c'est important de, de montrer que les blocs, ils ont déjà dit qu'ils ne veulent pas travailler avec les autres et ils ne peuvent pas travailler avec les autres. Nous, euh, nous sommes le choix progressiste. Uh, on est prêt de travailler avec les autres, on est prêt de travailler et rassembler les progressistes au Canada avec les progressistes au Québec pour ensemble bâtir une meilleure société et un meilleur monde. Donc, uh, je pense que, en fait, la réponse est qu'ils ont déjà dit qu'ils ne veulent pas travailler avec les autres. Ouais. Moi, je suis, je suis prêt, bien sûr, de travailler avec tout le monde pour euh, bâtir une meilleure société, sauf euh, les conservateurs. Mais les blocs ont déjà dit qu'ils ne veulent pas travailler avec les autres, ils ne peuvent pas travailler avec les autres. Sure. Sure, sure. 
Uh, to put it really clearly, the, the Bloc have made it clear that they do not want to and that they effectively cannot work with others. So in Quebec, if you want someone that's going to fight for you and that's going to be able to bring together progressives around Canada, the option is New Democrats. We are going to fight to build a better future and we can work together with everyone. What, what does yes, that mean, though, that this, the projection of the size of the Bloc to have a significant part of the Bloc economy that, according to Sabal Shek, will be looking after you know, the priorities of Quebec sovereignty? You know, so so I, I say to Quebecers, if you want someone that's going to fight climate crisis, it can't be the Bloc because they're not going to be able to work with the rest of Canada. We want to deliver real action on making sure we clamp down on offshore tax havens and making life more affordable. You need to have someone that's going to work together with everyone. That's New Democrats. It's not going to be the Bloc. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. Peter Van Dusen watching along with you. That was just